Welcome to Gov2 TV here on Fused Logic TV. It's the first episode of 2012. Very excited to kick off this series again, and, and uh, we're looking forward to another great year of episodes. Joining me via Skype out of Washington, D.C. is Alex Howard, at Digifile on Twitter. And, uh, you know, Alex, uh, first of all, again, Happy New Year to you and your family. I hope it was a, a great Christmas and uh, holiday season for you guys. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Happy New Year to you as well. I really enjoyed the break. It seems like a long time ago. Here we are at the you know, end of the third week, fourth week of January. It's, it's gone by very quickly, but uh, I certainly remember the holidays very fondly. Boy, you're not kidding in terms of speed. You're exactly right. It almost seems odd to say Happy New Year, given how fast January's cruised by. Uh, you know, let's kick it off and talk a little bit about uh, last year, 2011, a year in review. Uh, you've written a, uh, a blog post uh, or you know article. Uh, you know, it's it's difficult because I don't think Alex, you write average blog posts. I think your stuff has always been very content rich and so on. But uh, at uh, Radar uh, O'Reilly, and uh, you know, let's talk a little bit about the review. Um, what are some of the top things that stick out for you in 2011? I know there's so much. But if you had to say the top two or three things that really stick out for you, what, what, what are those, uh, those events or, or things? Well, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll break it down. And for people who are listening or come to this later, if you go to uh, radar.oreilly.com slash gov2, uh, you can find this post. It's featured there. Um, and I'll just break it down by subject area. You know, I, I, I couldn't write just the one uh, piece about it. I think I really had to link out and try to find as, as many of the different threads that, as you say, matter the most. Um, there are three dominant tech policy issues, uh, security, privacy, and identity. I don't see that stopping this year. I think uh, we saw the, the gov tool mean go mainstream on NPR and in the AP. So the, this idea of, uh, of civic uh, developers working with open data in cities is, is something that more people were introduced to. And I think there's going to be, continue to be something that grows this year. Um, we saw more civic startups go online. We see an emerging civic media ecosystem around the world. Uh, Shoka Changemakers is a piece of it in that. Um, see the continuing uh, slow, quiet evolution of open source and government, uh, something that 10 years ago we were in a very different place with. Now it's baked in many more places. We saw the open government movement go global. Uh, the open data platform is launching all over the place. The op launch of the open government partnership, which is something we talked about last year in September, uh, and, and seeing that. Uh, expand and uh, people trying to figure out what it means, um, whether it's good PR, whether it's something that will be a substantive change to how governance works. Uh, we saw a lot of federal open government initiatives here in the United States, um, a lot of challenges, some setbacks. I hear my dog coughing in the background. Um, and then we saw open data, I mentioned before, uh, continuing to be a dominant trend in this space. To some people's, I think, concern, I, I see a real groundswell of concern and, and in Canada but other places too that open data is taking too much of the attention from civic engagement or some of the transparency and accountability issues. Um, we certainly saw uh, social media use grow uh, in government, uh, certainly around government. Um, and then uh, the, the, one of the dominant trends certainly is this uh, clash between intellectual property and internet freedom uh, as a, a movement. So this idea of, of around how copyright is, is governed online um, integrating with uh, people's uh, free speech uh, or freedom of expression there and you know, internet freedom in general becoming a, a much more important thing uh, to you know more than a billion connected citizens around the world. Right. Well, let's get into SOPA in a minute. But, uh, you know, just to, to touch off what you were saying there, um, so many great points and so many, you know, great things. I, I too, am going to watch anxiously the, the open government partnership agreement as it progresses and I really do hope that it is more than just PR. I obviously think that uh, we need change in that regard, and I, I really do hope that something like that agreement does push uh, governments to to do things differently, do business differently. So uh, I have high hopes for it. It's definitely something that I think the audience should watch and pay attention to, uh, among many other things that you just mentioned. And of course, you know, you rattled off quite a number of things, and and uh, all of them important in all sorts of ways. 
Uh, so let's talk about SOPA. Let's talk about um, privacy and copyright. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a proponent of, uh, of, of having things done correctly, having, having legislation especially written correctly. I, I believe personally that this legislation wasn't written as probably well as it could have. And that being said, I'm no expert uh, certainly in that area. And, and I, I did not read the entire bill, every word uh, of it. But, you know, I just, I just seriously didn't think that it was, it, was, uh, it was done right. And I think that obviously a whole lot of people, I think, agreed to some degree one way or the other, however they're feeling. Um, but, you know, what we saw was a whole lot of people unite against uh, something. And, of course, last year was a year of protest, uh, as uh, Time Magazine put out there. And, and you know, and I, here's another example of that. Uh, you know, what, so what are your thoughts? I mean, obviously, you've got a blog post on it. This is the week the, the web changed Washington. Uh, but, but let's expand on that. Well, there's a couple things going on here. Uh, you know, I, I just tweeted out a link to a uh, post by Daniel Schumann, who writes at the Sunlight Foundation. And uh, if you're interested in the space of open government technology, um, they're, you know, one of the preeminent uh, advocacy and, uh, groups around. Uh, they've, they've been uh, working to open up government through technology, increase transparency uh, now for years here in Washington. And uh, what he points out is something that's very important, which is that in the, in the 90s, in 1995, Congress defunded the Office of Technology Assessment. Now, that's the, actually the body that was supposed to advise Congress on, uh, on technology. Um, and, and by so doing, they're trying to economize, right, uh, to, to slim down Congress. They also limited uh, staff budget. But the, what that effectively does, and, and he used a very memorable phrase here, is gave Congress a, a technology lobotomy. It, it really robbed the institution of some of the uh, ability that it should have had, it should have within it, to look at legislative proposals and think about how they would affect the Internet, think about how they would affect uh, industries that are very important, uh, whether uh, it's technology that affects medicine, technology that affects drugs, technology that affects innovation. In this case, we can see the driving force that the Internet, mobile technology, social technologies uh, ha are right now, particularly in the United States, but all around the world. And if you make uh, poor legislative choices, uh, in, in this case, the concern around SOPA, that's the Stop Online Piracy Act, was that it was overbroad in some of its definitions and uh, was, uh, uh, had the potential to change the compact that had been forged between uh, people uh, who are in charge of enforcing laws online and, and people who create content, uh, which has been around for over a decade now. And uh, the kind of way that went down um, is, is that uh, a lot of folks expected that this legislation, when it was introduced, would fix a lot of the issues from the Protect IP Act, which is the companion bill in the Senate, um, abbreviated as PIPA, uh, that Senator Leahy introduced and, and uh, got passed through the Judicial Committee. And what actually happened is that it was, in many people's eyes, worse. And uh, as a result, uh, we saw a, one of the, the fiercest uh, fights over technology policy in Washington's history and an unprecedented result, which is that the technology companies that would be affected uh, got involved. They activated their users, uh, most notably Wikipedia and Google and Craigslist. Um, O'Reilly Media decided on principle to uh, dark, uh, darken our website and inform people as much as we could about what we saw as the issues with legislation. And uh, people responded. Uh, the only people looked up their uh, legislators' uh, contact info on Wikipedia. Uh, millions of people signed a petition on Google. And, uh, and Congress saw a huge influx of emails, of tweets, of Facebook status updates, and calls. Um, and by the end of the week, um, these bills were indefinitely delayed. A vote on PIPA was delayed. Uh, SOPA was indefinitely shelved. Now, uh, many folks, I think, think, hear, feel that they're not dead, as some headlines have claimed. Uh, they, uh, there are absolutely people who uh, want to see different parts of the bills attached to other bills, um, incorporated in different ways. Um, there are, are huge forces here that want to see uh, some of the uh, issues around rogue, rogue websites, or around intellectual property theft online, be addressed. The concern you know, and this goes back to your original point, is uh, how well the legislation is drafted 
to do so, and, and whether there are technological means that are uh, determined in it that may not necessarily jibe with what the top engineers in the world, people like Tim Berners-Lee or Vince Cerf, are telling Congress would work. Um, generally, the, 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 what I'm hearing back is you know, following the money, cutting off advertising, cutting off the payment systems would be a more effective means, and that if you're going to do that, you need to make sure that there's an adversarial process in a court. Uh, yeah. There's a uh, you know a, an alternative suggestion that uh, uh, Congressman Issa and Senator uh, Wyden have advanced called the Open Act, which would use the International Trade Court. Um, people who are interested in that, uh, you can check out keepthewebopen.com. Uh, that's not without some issues, uh, and and I know that um, there's going to be a, a lot of discussion about that. But the the drafting of that bill, at least, was done in a fundamentally more open and transparent way than uh, these other two bills were. And uh, I think, uh, at least for the moment, we're in a better place now than we were uh, a week ago. Well, you know, if nothing else, what this exercise has done, a very dangerous exercise in some ways, but it has highlighted the issue for a whole bunch of people that were probably unaware or just not even, it wasn't top of mind. So if nothing else, uh, you know, as a result of this, I think that there's an ongoing discussion clearly, and hopefully it gets you know, if something happens, it, it'll be done properly. Because uh, ultimately, the individual out there uh, probably doesn't wake up every morning and think about this kind of thing until it, it actually affects how they operate on the web the next day. And so certainly a guy who, you know, and I forget his name now, but uh, the head of, uh, you know, megaupload.com, uh, you know, getting 50 years, uh, wow, uh, unbelievable. But, uh, you know, so I think that... Uh, I think that, you know, the, obviously the discussion I don't think is over. I think you're right. I think media announcing that this whole thing is dead is, is very much premature. But, of course, why we have you on the show, Alex, is because uh, for several reasons, but none the least of which is that you've got boots on the ground in Washington. So it, uh, it's always a great perspective. Let's wrap up with one more point, uh, one more uh, topic, and let's talk about the fact that uh, President Obama recently had a, a G Plus hangout or a Google Plus hangout. Um, did you get to participate in that at all? Did you did you take it in? Uh, I got to correct you in this one. It's coming up. Oh, is that right? That's right. It's going to be next week. Uh, oh, so sorry. Right. Well, good. Yeah, that no I didn't worries. miss it then. No worries. No, uh, this is something that that's new. It's going to be a first. Um, the White I House. I thought he already did. Right. The White House jo- has already joined Google Plus. Ah. Um, but now um, th- that that graphic is actually um, uh, cleverly from the. Uh, the first Twitter town hall. So oh, okay, there we go. There, right? Yeah, it um, gave me the impression that this thing had already happened. And But uh, you know what? This was the one point that I didn't do any research on before the show, so here we go. Yeah, it's scheduled. Uh, you know, it looks like uh, on Monday, January 30th, we're saying here, right? That's correct. Yeah, right And on. it's going to be uh, very interesting, uh, not least because uh, we're going to see, from what they're telling us, uh, people who have asked questions, and they're, they're going to... The White House's uh, YouTube account, and what they've done is they've set up uh, Google Moderator, much in the same way that they've done in the past State of the Unions uh, with CitizenTube, where people can submit questions to the president and then vote them up and down using the tool. Um, the questioners that they choose are going to have the opportunity, they say, to hang out with the president. Now, that that is a, an unprecedented use of the platform uh, for the White House. Other Man. candidates have done it. Newt Gingrich did it, notably, first uh, during the campaign. But no sitting president has logged on the Internet to a video uh, conference like this and invited citizens to ask him questions. Yeah, I mean, um, all due respect to Newt Gingrich, and I mean, I, I certainly probably wouldn't turn down an opportunity. But frankly, if I had a choice, um, I'd much rather hang out with the president of the United States. Um, holy cow, man, that is just so cool. Uh, the word unprecedented is so accurate for this because uh, it, it totally is. Now, you know what we got to do is we got to call up Stephen Harper, our prime minister up here in Canada, and say, look, hey, come on, right? Let's do something up here. I mean, why well, not? Yeah. In general, it's been my observation that when the White House has adopted different social media platforms, it's created interest and impetus for other world leaders to check them out as well. Uh, and you know, in many cases, they may wish to use their domestic platforms. Uh, for instance, in, in China, they might be using Weibo, right? Um, right. But the, uh, the the reality is that for many of these uh, platforms, they're global. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, um, tons of international users, more international users 
than are in the U.S. at this point. Um, it's just simply the way that, that scales. And uh, as a result, I think we'll see more world leaders uh, going to hang out uh, down the road. Uh, I mean, it, it, it makes sense in the context of that platform enabling that sort of real-time communication. Uh, what will be interesting to watch both with uh, President Obama and with subsequent leaders um, is how that interaction unfolds. Because, I mean, the, the one thing you see in many public appearances is the, the need or wish to control it, right? To, to know which questions are asked, to be able to give an answer and not do a follow-up. When you're doing a real-time conversation online, it's much harder to control, right? I mean, you could cut someone's feed, I suppose, but short of that, um, they're there with you. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. You know, will, you know, will the White House choose to mute someone or will they let them speak back to the president if they want to follow up? Well, that, that will be fascinating to watch on, uh, on January 30th. Uh, Alex, you know what I would, as I wrap up here, I want to, before I, I do that, I want to throw something at you in terms of an idea. I, we have had Google Plus Hangouts on our shows uh, here before and uh, stream them out and you know I'd like to I'd like I'd like to propose that we do that here we let's do a gov2 uh, TV Google Plus hangout um, invite you obviously but let's let's pull together a, a bit of a group that uh, you know audience members who might want to participate and let's schedule that for some time in the near future what do you think of that sure sounds good to me yeah cool well listen Alex Howard from uh, RadarO'Reilly.com. It's actually Radar.O'Reilly.com. Uh, thanks once again for being on uh, Gov2TV. We've covered off a great uh, number of topics and subjects. It's been a fantastic first show of 2012. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've tuned in today and watched us, we sure appreciate your support and tuning in on a regular basis here on FuseLogic TV. Uh, I've been your host, Walter Schwabe, and if you've watched this on YouTube, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, share this on Facebook, and uh, give us a G-plus hit if you wouldn't mind, too, as well. If you'd like to uh, touch base with Alex on Twitter, his Twitter handle, again, is at Digifile. Say hi to him. He's a very friendly guy, and will definitely respond if he has time. And I'm, of course, at FusedLogic as well on Twitter. Until next time, take care. Cheers.